noise-making devices off. <clears throat> okay, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the April 7th uh, meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, Wintro. Here. Austin? Yes. Sims? Here. Couch? Here. McQueen? Here. Also present are Villain Interim Village Manager Kent Bristol. Welcome back. And Supervisor of Streets and Parks, Jason Handy. Thank you. Yes. We are definitely happy to have, uh, have Kent back after his mm -hmm. surgery. And he's been here part of the day today. So he's, uh, we'll try to keep him, not keep him too late tonight. Um, let's start with announcements. Um, I know that there are some folks here from the um, from Green County um, Department Council, 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 Council on Aging. Aging. Yeah. So Sorry. come on up. My name is Karen Pewterball, and I'm the Director of the Council on Aging. Uh, this is in, located in Xenia, um, but I'm here tonight to talk about the Senior Services Levy, which is on the May 6th ballot. You'll make sure I'm, I'm taken care of. Thank you. <laughs> um, and do have a number of folks here from the Yellow Springs Senior Center, our, our primary partner here in Yellow Springs. Um, what I've shared with you, I, I, obviously I'm not going to read it to you, but um, the basic information about the levy, my hope is that I can, can provide a few highlights and then maybe you have a question or two that, that you might want to ask. Um, I always encourage that because if you have a question, I know many, many people in the community have the same question. Um, we are the only countywide issue that's on the on the ballot so uh, one thing we know is that there will not be an enormous number of people that are going to come out to vote this May so um, it's real important that we get the, the message out we are um, our current levy expires at the end of this year and this particular levy will be a renewal of the current one mill with an increase of 0.4 I've shared some information with you about the number of seniors countywide that that we connect with in a number of ways, uh, but also gave you some specific Yellow Springs information. And our Partners in Care program is our largest program where we actually work with in individual seniors and families and provide services, purchase services on their behalf um, to maintain their independence, the quality of life in the, in the home. And as you'll see there, we have 67 seniors in the Yellow Springs community, 62 of which have at least one purchase service. And what we have found over the years is that we are able to use a little bit of money <coughs> to make a significant impact on the lives of a lot of seniors and, and caregivers. And I think um, all of you uh, appreciate that um, it is the family and friends and neighbors who are taking care of our seniors in the community. So we also support them in any way we possibly can. 71% uh, of the council's budget goes to partners in care. So again, that's where the lion's share of the, of the money goes to. And, um, but then 23% of the dollars go to grants. And those grants go to our senior centers, obviously Yellow Springs being one of those. And in this uh, information sheet, you'll see that in 2013, um, between the grants uh, that the center receives and we also purchase homemaker services from them, they do a phenomenal job with not just seniors in, in uh, Yellow Springs, but <coughs> in uh, Cedarville and, and Fairborn and, and Xenia. Um, we provided them with 148, just over $148,000, um, which represents 35% um, of their budget. Last year, we also were, had the opportunity to provide 80% of the cost of the new Prius that they're using in the transportation program uh, because we do a vehicle uh, grant every, every year to the senior centers with transportation programs. Um, I think the number that I'm most proud of as, as the director of this organization is that less than 3% of the budget is for um, general administration and fundraising. So we are very lean and, and mean and the, uh, the dollars get out to the community, out to seniors, families, and those, and those um, senior centers. But 93% of the levy, 93% of the council's budget comes from the levy. So we are a dependent organization on those levy dollars. Um, one thing I like to share with people um, who may not know, our name would, 
make you think otherwise, but we're not a part of the county government. We are a not-for-profit organization, and under the Ohio Revised Code, it pr provides the opportunity for organizations like ourselves to uh, generate income through a senior services levy. So, and I will say that we are able to be very, very creative and um, uh, extra efficient and, and get things done uh, maybe in a more timely way than if we maybe we were part of a, a larger system. Oh. I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. Um, but obviously, we all know that the senior population is growing. Um, is something that we all aspire to do. We do want to get older, uh, but we want to get older um, uh, in, in a positive way, and that's what we hope to accomplish with the services that we provide. Um, in terms of the, you know what's the impact to the homeowner, which is obviously very important, the increase annual increase to the homeowner's tax bill would, would be fourteen dollars for that hundred thousand dollar valued home. So the total tax bill for the year would be forty four dollars and sixty three cents. And we know it's always challenging to ask for more, but we are hopeful that the community will see that it's a good investment in, in their neighbors and their family members and in their community and, and themselves and, and decide that this is something worthy of their affirmative vote. Um, so that's what I have to share from the, from the big picture. I believe that uh, Karen Wolford, who's the director of the Senior Center, <laughs> has a few, a few things to s share with you as well. Absolutely. <coughs> I'm Karen Wolford, the director of the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and just to give you some of the things locally um, that I find is very fascinating as a newbie to this job less than a year, uh, currently 40% of the village residents are over the age of 55. That is expected to increase by 2020 to 55%. And so that translates to somewhere around 14 to 1600 or so of the village residents are that age 55 or over and so th our need for services is going to increase um, uh, it is some of the things that Karen touched on the transportation program if you don't know we transport clients and our services to doctor's appointments to the grocery store to the bank to all sorts of things all they have to do is just call and we'll make a make a run we'll also take them to the polling places in May uh, as a service that we will provide. Uh, we do a number of activities at the location at 227 Xenia Avenue. So if you've not seen the in and out and see the people coming in and out of the Senior Center, it's just absolutely a wonderful, uh, marvelous place to see. Karen touched on the percent of the budget that we receive from the Green County Council on Aging. That's about 35% of our overall budget. If we didn't have that, I can't imagine where we would cut 35% percent of our services uh, we currently have a little over 800 members of the senior center and given the fact that about 1400 fall into that age group we're serving a, a good amount of the citizens even through membership in the senior center that are uh, members but that's not the only story we've got one person here who wants to tell you a story about the impact that the senior services has on her family Hello, for those of you who don't know, I'm Jalen Rowe, and I am the uh, second vice president on the board of directors for the Senior Center. But I'm not here this evening to talk about that. I actually went to the council meeting in Xenia, and I'm here because I am such a fan of this organization and this program. My mother is participating at a very high level. She has. Um, the housekeeper come in she has a they've actually uh, hooked her up where we can have a companion come in and sit with her and talk with her she has short-term memory loss so there's there's some things that she forgets and there's some things that she cannot do and uh, twice a week this organization the Green County Council on Aging through the Senior Center has a person come in and helps her with her meals she is um, actually receiving the Meals on Wheels, which is through that program also, because she won't and does not cook and forgets to eat, actually. So they actually come in, they talk with her. They not only sit down with her while she's eating, uh, they not only prepare the, the food uh, that comes in, but she, they sit with her while she's eating. And then when the, she does that, she eats a lot more. 
she has actually um, gained weight, which is very important because she was down to 90 pounds and the doctor said that they would, she'd have to go in and be on an IV. And I really attribute this program for the reason why she's staying at home. So on a very, very personal level, it is so important that we back it and that we support it. I am one of those that are over 55, so I fall into that, that um, group, but I'm asking everyone, not just the seniors, to support this program because it takes a village, <laughs> and I appreciate it. Thank you so much on a very personal level. Thank, Thank you, Jalen. Council members, questions for any of the speakers? citizens any questions? I, I, I don't have a question but um, I surely support this levy um, my family has used the services of the senior center and um, you know we have seniors that have contributed so much to this community and they deserve to get paid back in this very small way Thank you, any citizen questions Jerry were you gonna any citizen questions um, I, I hope I can say on behalf of council that we would encourage um, the community to support this levy. We don't really do resolutions of, of support anymore, but I think you know we all recognize how important the Green County Council on Aging and obviously our own senior center is to this community <coughs> and to the region. And so we would certainly encourage um, the citizens to support the levy and um, hope that it passes. Get out. What, what, May 6th, right? May 6th. May 6th, we've got a sign. These are signs you'll start to see um, all around the village. <laughs> if, uh, of our senior services. So if somebody wanted those tonight, could they, do you have any extras? I, have, I don't have, I do have window clings. Okay. There are window clings that say stay our senior Actually, services. if you hold that back up, Paul will get it on the camera. And I, su <laughs> and I suspect that you will have the signs <laughs> at the senior center. center. So if anybody needs a sign, go by the senior center. Absolutely. And I'll leave these tonight and also a half sheet information. Okay. So if you could just I'll leave those in the, the, leave them out the desk on the outside. Table would, yeah. be, would be great. It doesn't yeah. say the date, but the date of the vote is May 6th. May 6th. Great. Right. Thank you all. started today. So. Right. Thank you. Right. Out at Antioch Midwest is where we all vote again, okay. again, again this, this year because okay. of the construction. Um, and uh, people should realize that it's, it is a low turnout vote. So Yellow Springs could have a disproportionate effect if you just get out and vote in larger numbers than the surrounding area. So, um, and there's a couple, there's at least one other kind of interesting thing, I think, on the ballot. Well, the, for us. If you're in district, what's the district? 443? Mine. 443. Four four there's the, the liquor ordinance will be on for the Mexican restaurant. Um, at KFC so so if you're eager to have a Mexican restaurant and you live down on the south side you might also want to vote I know I am <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a couple of announcements um, one is this was in there are copies of this outside in the table and it was also in the packet it's from um, Green County recycling it's about their yard waste they are continuing to keep the the um, Xenia yard waste area open. I think that there was talk of closing it. It will be open for at least one more year, but they're also allowing us county residents to take yard waste down to, um, it's called Eco Green. It's down on Dayton Yellow Springs Road, right across from, um, it's, it's close to CMEX, but it's, it's in a, uh, at, oh at yeah. a car at a car repair place so that's a great location Jason said that they take a lot of stuff there so that's a great close location for us and then there's another one also in Xenia called Biosource what they what they're apparently looking to do is to privatize the, this recycling um, slowly um, and but there's the staff is is wants to make sure that that all of these locations are ready so I assume most of you will be having some yard waste so just if you have that and if you need that information you can pick up one of these or go to the county website and they will have information too right and then they also on one Saturday a month I think it's usually the second Saturday so this upcoming April 12th they have special collections for hazardous waste electronics um, metal appliances scrap metal 
um, from 9 to noon. So there's stuff you can't get rid of. You can usually bring it down there, and they'll make sure it's safely disposed of. So this is a good brochure to hold on to, just so you know what to do with, with your waste. Then the other is that on April 15th, there will be a free workshop at um, the Yellow Springs Library about uh, mortgages. It's being hosted by Home Inc. and the Neighborhood Housing Partnership of Greater Springfield. So that's April 15th from 6 to 7.30. File your taxes and go <laughs> listen to a uh, mortgage workshop. Yeah, and they're going to cover some topics like uh, refinancing. Does your mortgage make sense? Uh, it looks like a great program. Any other announcements from Council? Okay, we'll move on to a review of the minutes um, from the March 17th meeting. Page one, page two, <coughs> page three, page four, page five. Oh, page I do have something on page four. Okay. The second sentence, well, I mean, it's the top sentence where it says uh, about it was about the electricity and that the business owner left because of the electricity that was not the reason okay the, the there was a it was the downturn in the economy that the business shut down well that was not the implied reason at the time I could change it but it was implied that that was the reason that the business owner left. could well, you just go back and listen maybe listen to the tape and see if that can be clarified Sorry, who was it? Who said it? I, I'm sorry. Are you talking about Steve Deal? Steve Deal's letter, yeah. Well, okay. It didn't leave because of. Uh, so you're contesting the letter, though, not what's. Well. No, I'm not contesting the letter. I didn't think that the letter implied that. But she can't. She can only. The minutes are only on what's said at the council meeting. Not what. Well, not I was what's the one the that letter. said it. <laughs> Well, she'll go back and listen to what was said and change it as, sh okay. as she can. But if, if, I sa if something I said had that implication, then that was not the implication I intended to have. Okay. That, okay. that was not the reason You for can't change minutes after the fact, that was un is unfortunately. She'll go back and listen to the minutes and see what she can, okay. what she can modify. Mm -hmm. Page six. Okay. Uh, motion for approval. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. Um, moving on to a review of the agenda. Um, anything we want to add? Anything that needs to be added to the agenda? Anything to be moved around? Okay. Thank you. Lori, did you want to take a moment to review? Well, there really wasn't a lot in Everything the Everything was. There was nothing in the packet that was from a um, citizens, except for the petition from um, regarding downtown buskers. And this was a petition um, asking the council to uh, basically, yeah, sorry. I was, couldn't read my own thing. Um, supporting the or asking council to support an ordinance banning the use of amplified and recorded sound and multiple drums by street musicians in the downtown area not including sponsored events and making children exempt basically supporting acoustic mu musicians but um, asking for limitations on things that are electronic amplified um, rec recorded or uh, multiple drums and it was signed by lots of people, some of whom are residents, some of whom are not, some of whom are business owners, um, and they had that delineated. Is, is this one of the issues that we had asked um, the Public Arts Commission to consider? Yes. Okay. Okay. So they will uh, presumably come and report back to us on yeah, that? Yeah, it's uh, on the agenda for this Wednesday. Okay. So on the 21st, we can... Uh, talk about that and I would I would you know if Con this maybe contact uh, do we know John, who? John is here John, John. Brennan okay. who is the one who circulated wrote and circulated the petition so you right. might want to have John there a and I would also I did a little bit of research on this and there are um, there are a lot of communities 
communities have tried to do this. There are issues of free speech. There are a lot of legal issues. Um, this will have to go, I wouldn't say before you guys talk about it, but sometime very quickly into the conversation, it's probably going to have to go to legal counsel because of the freedom of speech issues. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Freedom of expression. Freedom kind of, of thing. expression, yes. A noise ordinance would come into. Well, but that's a different. That's different than an ordinance banning something. I, we're not. Uh, okay. I'm just alerting them. To right. Yeah. So, and where to have the initial conversation will be at the Arts Council meeting, which is where and when. Uh, so the Public Art Commission meets. Uh, it's always the second Wednesday of each month, so it'll be on the ninth. And um, actually, we're going to be starting this month at six. Uh, and um, is it I in this? Maybe you can find somebody who can come on your behalf. Where is that meeting? Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, in the arts room here okay. in the Bryan Center. I, I will say that most of the business owners downtown are uh, interested in something happening with this. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a conversation. Um, okay. Moving on to public hearings and legislation. Uh, first reading of ordinance 2014-3 returning easement number five um, from Glen Helen to the village Yay! <laughs> <laughs> whereas the village of Yellow Springs requires a utility easement along a parcel of land owned by Antioch College Corporation and whereas Antioch College Corporation has agreed to grant said easement to the village of Yellow Springs now therefore the council for the village of Yellow Springs Ohio hereby ordains that Section 1, the village hereby accepts a utility easement from Antioch College Corporation in form substantially similar to the attached Exhibit A. Section 2, the village manager is authorized to execute and record the easement. And I will add a Section 3, this ordinance will be in full force and effect 30 days after its reading, unless there is some reason we need to do this as an emergency next time, that will be the case. I think so, okay. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So move. Second. Okay. Kent, um, do you want to take this one on? This is a cleanup, and Nick is here, but he's, be he's better informed than I am. Uh, but this is basically a cleanup that goes along with, I believe, putting a conservation easement on the Glen, and we're trying to eliminate unnecessary or redundant easements, and we've already vacated a number on our side, and this is an attempt. We have two easements in the past, uh, that allow uh, the village to use part of the glen to reach our own water plant, which is uh, isolated from the village. And there, there are two purposes for the easement. One is to allow a power line to provide electricity to run the plant. The other is to allow a pipe, uh, which is buried, to serve the, to deliver water from the plant to the system uh, in the village. And uh, so what this really is, is we abandoned two 50-foot easements or attempting to substitute a single 60-foot easement and to clean up the language so that in the future, uh, as we need to make changes and adjustments, that we can work towards having minimal impact on the ground, reducing our footprint. Is that a good way to put it? Um, Nick Budis, Director of Glen Helen, um, nothing substantial to add to that. The easement also provides for uh, access points for, for the village uh, along the bike path. Um, and just because I brought it, I'm going to go ahead and read the, the easement that it's uh, supplanting from October of 1960. Uh, I'll paraphrase, uh, situate the township of Miami, County of Green, yada yada, um, being two easements 50 uh, feet wide at points to be determined by the village council in the future across lands of Antioch College. So oh, wow. <laughs> that, that is uh, in uh, encapsulation uh, one of the reasons why we're trying to update these so that as we put a modern easement. conservation easement on the Glen, we actually are saying, yes, this is where the power line is and this is where the water line are is and, and this is where the village will will access that into the future and certainly happy to answer any other questions the council might have I I did talk to Joe Bates when we had um, 
agenda planning on um, last Monday. I talked to Joe Bates about it, and Joe's fine with it. Um, there was kind of a negotiation of language, and and uh, he, you know, he thinks he's he doesn't see any problems from his part as you know operating the water system. So, um, and I think we're fine as far as the electric lines are concerned. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the map is pretty self-explanatory. Thanks, Nick. Sure. Um, any comments or questions from <coughs> council? Citizens? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. Askland? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Housh? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Thank you. Um, moving on to resolution 2014 17, approving a pool management contract for 2014. All right, whereas the village sought bids for the delivery of pool management services for the 2014 pool season, and whereas the village manager reviewed all the submitted bids and conducted an investigation of the responsibility of the bidders, and whereas upon careful consideration of the bids by Park Supervisor Jason Hamby and the village manager, the village manager recommended to council that the bid be awarded to Dayton Pool Management as the lowest and best bid, and whereas the village desires to retain the services of Dayton Pool Management for professional pool management services for the 2014 swim season from May 24th to September 1st, 2014, and whereas the proposed agreement with Dayton Pool Management is attached as Exhibit A to this resolution, now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, that Section 1, the village manager is authorized to execute the contract in substantially similar form for pool management services for the 2014 pool season as set forth in Exhibit A, and Section 2, this resolution shall go into effect at the earliest period allowed by law. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So move. Second. Kent? <coughs> um, do you, can you actually Chris uh, Connor the attorney well, did as much as and we were we I I spoke with Chris quite a bit about this um, we did talk about this at the last meeting we basically agreed to this I think we're all aware that there were were there four other bids or three, three other bids three other bids that were actually somewhat lower than this one but um, after Kent did some investigation and especially Chris Connor did some investigation they weren't responsive um, they weren't I don't know that any of the three were actually licensed to do business in Ohio. They didn't respond with the adequate amount of insurance that we required. So there were a number of reasons that um, they weren't considered to be responsive bids. So, um, it, you know, typically we would. I, I think. I think actually. I think we're more concerned about making sure we make the best decision and. The bids were very close together. This is actually, I think, about $6,000 cheaper than last year's um, contract with Dayton Pool. Um, you know, as it says in the, in the resolution, Dayton or er, Jason spoke at the last meeting, very supportive of, of Dayton Pool. So, um, I think that uh, I think that everybody uh, concurs that this was is the right way to go. Um, you know, Jason's here. Anybody have any questions, comments, questions from citizens, Joan? Joan Edwards, um, my concern is not with the Dayton pool, managing the pool. My concern is with that strip of grass that got sprayed um, last year and the temporary moratorium that um, was put on the application of 24D. And I don't want to just have that sort of drift into Never Never Land. Um, and I remember um, suggesting to Lori that maybe we could do something different with that space that wouldn't require the concern of people who might get possibly stung by a honeybee, even though honeybees are not very aggressive creatures, um, so that we wouldn't have to even think about application of a pesticide. Um, more and more um, more and more states are banning the use of 2,4-D, and I think, Lori, I've mm -hmm. um, emailed you all the emails that I have gotten about the concern of that pesticide mm -hmm. for not only honeybees, but for people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. these little kids are playing, you know, they put their hands on it, you put your hands in your mouth, and this is a very, very toxic um, 
chemical. So I would like to um, propose that somehow council get something together that would maybe eliminate completely that grass and make it um, tiled or whatever that uh, you know you'd have to get somebody who was willing to do that put maybe uh, block tiles of cement in and put <laughs> picnic tables up there for kids to sit on and so on so that we don't have the issue of gee there's there's a bee here okay yeah thanks, thanks Joan uh, Jason could you just take a couple of minutes and describe what modifications what additions you're going to do at the pool this year um, what we have um, in the budget um, proposed is uh, we're going to um, add a seating area in which we will um, uh, take a portion out add concrete and then put an awning of some sort up uh, for um, shade and comfort um, as we talked about last time uh, there's a possibility of us looking at um, different things as far as what Miss Edwards talked about um, as far as utilizing that space a little bit better so that there's no grass there at all um, but that hasn't been discussed as, right. as, as far as yet I guess we can talk about it when we talk about the capital budget in about 10 minutes hmm. thanks Jason um, I have one comment about the contract um, the last year's contract had the swimming lessons in August and we had talked about having them change to the beginning of the season I think and I just wanted to make sure that that would be in the new contract yeah I think that this is actually just a copy of the old contract yeah it is, it's just a copy of the old contract but I just think so that that was important okay. that's something that Kent will take care of or Jason the two of you together okay mm -hmm. any other comments council um, all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. <coughs> okay thank you uh, next is reading of resolution 2014-19 approving a then and now certificate you want this whole shebang or can you just want the items um, let's just do the items okay so this is authorizing payment of invoices with then and now certificates for the second quarter um, and the items are included are two invoices from Rumkey for $42,206.19, DPNL $15,802.43, American Municipal Power $204,340.64, All Seal Home Improvement $3,252, and the Bureau of Workers' Compensation $28,614.56. Okay. Um, can I have a motion, please? So move. move. <coughs> Second. <coughs> Melissa, could you handle this for a minute and, and explain, because I think we've already said that this wasn't going to happen again and it's happening again, and explain <coughs> why it's happening again and why it's not going to happen again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, we had a temporary budget that was in place, so um, most of those are blanket orders, which would have been put in at the beginning of the year, ideally, when we had the whole budget in place, but there wasn't enough money that was allocated. So, therefore, it kind of got put off. So now that we have the permanent appropriations in place, we're in a better place to be able to put some of those larger blankets like um, some of the power cost and such and uh, Rumkey out there. There's also a bit of a communication breakdown too, um, which I've tried my best to take care of, um, where you know the, the timing of the invoices landing on the accounts payable clerk's desk um, wasn't really matching up and was kind of creating some of this too. So I've taken great steps to communicate my expectations. So hopefully we do not run into this again. Okay. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Yes. Any questions? Well, I probably should have <coughs> asked that before Melissa sat down. Um, and the main thing is this is kind of it's just making sure that everything is totally above board right. and and very transparent. That, that we had the money and, mm -hmm. and that it was authorized So, at the time it was spent. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> 
And last, um, reading of resolution 2014-20, designating the council clerk to receive sunshine law training on behalf of council. This could just be done by yeah, just title by title only. only. Yeah. yeah. This is designating Judy Kintner as village council's designee to receive public records training on behalf of each of the elected officials pursuant to and in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 109.43B and 149.43E1. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, Judy, you've done this before, right? Could you describe it? Well, every year the auditor checks <coughs> to see that every every elected official, mayor, council, everyone has received sunshine law training for that that year, but it is not required actually that you yourself receive that training, particularly for folks who've been on council for a while. It's kind of the same old thing again and again. Um, so the clerk can take it for all of council and the mayor's clerk can take it for the mayor um, but you can't do that unless you've passed a resolution stating that in fact that is what you are doing so anyone can certainly go take sunshine law training but it's just sort of is a little CYA in case someone doesn't do that and we get audited and and just to um, when new council members come on board there's always an orientation our attorney comes to that orientation and sunshine law is a big part of that meeting I know that almost all new council members, and I believe that both um, Brian and Marianne went to training with the Ohio Municipal League, and then there's also another training. When's the um, <coughs> MVCC training that John Whitehofer does? There's MVCC trainings coming up maybe sometime this spring. I'm not sure. But so so they, we all have had training. So this isn't this isn't you know we're we're getting our training on Sunshine Law. This is just you know kind of covering the the legal requirement um, it's also nice too if people for you know, forget forget their right. little certificate or some such thing it's just in one spot so right and it we do periodically review sunshine law as uh, whenever an issue arises we you know we go over we've got documentation I I periodically check it up again just to make sure that everything is following so it is something we take pretty seriously All right. thank you uh, any Questions or comments, Sue? <coughs> Sue Abendroth. I would also first want to clarify that boards and commissions must also follow the Sunshine Law. And since there's a lot of turnover in that, could you direct the liaison to those organizations to? reiterate with the members of those organizations those commissions what their responsibilities are for the sunshine law that's, that's a great that's idea thank you a very good idea okay consider yourselves so ordered I think <laughs> <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I know it's a good idea, idea. Yeah, there's a new do you provide you them? Receive the sunshine law oh Lincoln good okay with right. all of that information in their letter so yes okay is everybody ready to take the vote yes mm -hmm. all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. <coughs> okay, uh, now is the time in the agenda uh, where we hear from citizens, um, and this would be about anything that isn't on the agenda already. Um, I don't know if anybody signed the list, but um, that's okay, you don't have to. It's just some people like to. Well, good evening. My name is Amy Magnus. Good evening, Council Members and um, Yellow Springs residents. Um, uh, I represent a small group of residents who are here to open what we hope is an energetic discussion of bringing municipal broadband to Yellow Springs. Um, after preliminary study, we are happy to report that Yellow Springs appears to be an excellent position to uh, strategically position to access to um, access high capacity information systems with existing infrastructure and with compared to other municipalities that have made this investment um, uh, very reasonable uh, investments in new infrastructure um, the the internet has become a utility like water and electricity our children are going to be uh, are, are going to be relying on this even more um, we can see from a recent article by Megan Bachman in the paper 
um, and uh, recently on uh, yellowspringsnews.com that uh, some of the increases in our jobs have been in the information sector and increasingly people are telecommuting from Yellow Sp um, Springs from their work. I'm one of those people who telecommutes and I've actually been frustrated with my current internet provider in that over the past year when I'd be, when I translate with the technology, I'd be expecting the quality of service to be increasing. It's in fact decreasing. So um, we, we see there, is, um, there are signs, emerging signs, that people are fr uh, frustrated with uh, the current services, wh wh frustrated with getting needs met. There's capacity in, uh, in terms of dark fiber. These are unused uh, fiber optics infrastructure uh, in the town. And we also have um, this wonderful uh, publicly uh, uh, publicly owned data center at the Illinois Educational Computer Association, which is, a non, uh, which is uh, the association is a nonprofit of regional councils of governments, and they uh, can provide a, a capacity for local governments to provide increased, uh, again, increased access to information services. Now this means high-speed internet. It could also mean smart grids. It could mean better communications for our police and our fire departments. Um, uh, also uh, better health care, um, uh, 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 providing information in health care services that um, could exist in today in the village and could exist in the future. Um, so w the, the, <coughs> the group is essentially conducting, uh, is initiating market research and one of the first things that we've done is uh, initiated a survey we have some preliminary vo um, uh, results at the moment we've only had um, uh, we've had less than 50 respondents I've included in your in the information that we've handed out a link to the current survey and that will be provided um, online uh, we'd like people to participate in that and it asks some simple questions like who your per current provider is what your satisfaction how often you get on um, and if you've noticed any change in your service over the past year. So sorry. That's yeah, very yeah, loud. Sorry about yeah. That. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks, so Amy. Oh, fair enough. <coughs> um, I have a follow on, if I may. On the same subject? Um, oh, similar subject. It's a piggyback. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, as you know, um, my name is Dawn Johnson. I am a city and regional planner. And um, oh, something that uh, the American Planning Association is, is encouraging all planners to do is make sure communities are positioned to take advantage of the, the next coming wave, the smart city. Um, and so in that, this whole notion of a municipal broadband <coughs> is an opportunity for Yellow Springs, if, it's, if it fits, to get on that wave at a very high point. And um, I've shared with uh, Marianne and both Brian uh, CERD, the uh, Citizens Institute on Rural Design, is offering an opportunity for uh, communities, our size communities, to um, take advantage of some very low cost. It could even be in-kind uh, contribution of the value of $7,000. So if we had local experts spending, you know, I don't know, uh, 10 hours, you know, four or five local experts, there's your $7,000 of in-kind services to take advantage of this grant where you, uh, we would get um, an opportunity to do, um, uh, uh, to find creative solutions and this being an opportunity to really be a creative solution for Yellow Springs. And I would um, uh, encourage the uh, council to consider uh, allowing us to move forward uh, with this grant application. Um, it's due May 7th. But it is a, it's a, a wonderful opportunity for us to take advantage of some uh, excellent national and international um, consultants that will come here, lead a two and a half day visioning session so that we could kick off that uh, strategic plan that would be necessary if we were going to implement this doesn't mean we are I mean we, it may not be the right fit for us and that's what we'll find out too uh, but I do know that uh, the key group uh, did a, a survey a few years back um, and um, 
it's it's really with Mimveka here in our town um, I we have an excellent opportunity to uh, take Yellow Springs uh, into the 22nd century well before any other community our size and uh, you want to talk about economic development the hundred or so communities that I've studied so far that have their own municipal uh, broadband those communities are the communities getting the businesses doesn't matter if they're on the, the physical highway, they're on the super highway of the future. And um, those are the communities that are going to have the growth opportunities that um, typical rural communities won't have unless they can get up to speed. And we're, I believe we're excellently positioned, but if we're not, this will help us know that too. So I encourage council to take a look at the CERD grant and um, give us an opportunity to find Did out if the rest of us get a copy. Um, I emailed it to Marianne and Brian. Okay, we can't make a decision on something That's we fine. don't have a copy I, about. I'll, I can get. Um, I, I will email copies tonight. Um, I, I think we need to decide if we're going to enter. I mean, if they need, we need to decide something at the next meeting. Well, or what e potentially they, even tonight. What What do you need from us? Uh, in ter do is it? Does it require a letter from us? Does it require a, it, a proposal? <coughs> what What? Well, there will have to obviously be a proposal, but a, a letter from council would suffice, and then we would indicate what our seven thousand dollars of in-kind contribution could be and it would be it would be easy like i said it would be easy enough for us to pull together uh, our local expertise but well, i mean we have the maveka uh, folks who who've already met with us and um you know their counseling time is certainly worth a hundred dollars an hour and i think it wouldn't be very hard to rack up seven thousand dollars worth of hours I, I think I think we have to have a little bit more, a little bit stronger mm -hmm. understanding of what we're committing Certainly. to than that. I mean, so I only had three minutes. I so think you're right. going to have, well, yeah. it wasn't on the agenda. Right. We didn't know it was going to be on the agenda. What I would suggest is that if you, um, you bring something to the next meeting, to the April 21st meeting. Okay. Um, I, and just understand that uh, I don't know the capacity that this community is going to have that that our government entity is going to have to support this. I mean, we don't have sta we're, we we're down on staff. Right. Um, we really don't have the funds to commit to it. And that's and what this study will reveal. We're building a water plant and we're doing a lot of things. So, I have a lot of hesitation to to commit any of our staff yeah. capacity to this project. I completely understand. I completely understand and I I apologize for the short notice. I learned about this maybe 2 weeks ago. We had an opportunity to talk on Friday. I'm surprised we're up here today because we just had our group meeting on Friday. But I well, do appreciate you giving well, us bring this something, opportunity. Bring something that we can actually sink our teeth into on, on the We'll make sure it gets into the packet. Right. It's into the packet. I'll, I will send it tonight, though, so that you do have time to kind okay. of uh, digest it before and the meeting. It sounds like you've already reached well, out to the two. Well, us two with my understanding when you sent the grant application was that it was a application I thought you had suggested for doing something around economic development and I don't know if I talked to you I talked to my friend Pat DeWeese who is familiar with these kind of grants and that organization and that are just talking about it we felt like we had enough skills in town to just work on whatever the project was rather than work do all the work that you need to do to s submit a grant where you have and not I, that much opportunity to get the grant you know just work on the project and I, I, I see that. With that and and if you look in here <coughs> we're going to go forward with a strategic plan regardless but um, having the opportunity this would sort of give us that um, that initial synergy because they know how to spin these things together um, I, are you familiar with sir no, the, the the council okay um, they they've done uh, several uh, very um, well thought out and, it, and it's up to the community too I mean the community has to put that en energy into it too and I understand what you're saying right. you've got five things on the on the, uh, the burner now we're gonna have to move on but just just understand whatever you're committing that that at this point we're, we're not really committing to anything I mean you 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 need to understand at some point to when you're going to bring us in and, and at what point we're going to have the capacity to move forward or to say we're going to support uh, just one question um if we talk about this on the 21st will that still be enough time to submit the 
grant application? If, if we move forward with pulling it all together and all we're doing is waiting on the letter of commitment, I think that that's a possibility. But like Marianne said, in the event that we don't, we're still, we still need to put together a strategic plan. If this is something that you would ever think about, you can't just kind of like, you know, oh, let's have a municipal broadband, let's do this. You know it takes that kind of planning effort. And it, we're talking probably one or two years of spin-up time. Mm -hmm. um, and how do citizens get to the survey? It's on SurveyMonkey. Right now, um, the um, it's got a convoluted right. you know, uh, email address. It's on, it's on uh, open discussion in Facebook. I'm um, going to have some paper surveys at the library in the pamphlet section by the back door. Since the library is not supporting it, they can't hand it out and they can't monitor it. But there will be paper um, uh, surveys there because I think it's important for for uh, citizens who don't have the internet to respond to the survey as well. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any other citizen concerns to be brought forward? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll <coughs> come back. Um, the next item on the agenda is a special report. We have a library commission annual report. Is somebody here to give that report? Oh, yes there is. I thought it was Lily Claire. That was going to be doing the report. <laughs> I think she's. Do I come Good evening, members of council. I'm Carl Colon, the director of the Green County Public Library. I'm joined tonight by Yellow Springs 2044 mayoral candidate Lily and Claire Colon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity to report to the council. It's been a uh, it's been another very spectacular year at the Yellow Springs Community Library. I just took a little uh, little peek at the stats before I came over. Uh, Yellow Springs Community Library circulated 202,000 items uh, to the, the residents of the village. I did a little back of the napkin math, and that comes out around the area of about 58 items per person uh, in the village. So, um, on behalf of the Green County Public Library system, thank you. Um, it's um, one of the statistics that speaks most to my heart, um, as you can see, is, is that uh, about 2,700 and some children uh, came to story times at the library in, uh, wow. in 2013. And so, you know, when you look at our uh, missions, which I include, I should say, reaching out to our seniors through the Council on Aging. Um, we're a proud partner of the Council on Aging. We deliver over 36,000 items around Greene County every year to folks who aren't able to come in, to seniors who are homebound. Um, and we're proud to be presenting uh, a senior memoir writing project through the Council on Aging, where Yellow Springs writer Ralph Kies is teaching Greene County seniors um, how to write memoirs in the hope that some of them will share those memoirs with the Greene County Room Historical Archive that we keep at the library. So we're very engaged um, throughout uh, all the jurisdictions and especially Yellow Springs in the community. Um, I'm giving a report on behalf of the Commission tonight. Uh, as many of you are aware, I've had the pleasure of working with Councilman Sims, uh, who's now our liaison. And uh, we've had a, a big discussion, mm -hmm. uh, which has also involved Jason, uh, about moving forward uh, with a continuing building maintenance plan that uh, was originally brought forward uh, several years ago. Um, the council uh, commissioned Ted Denell to do a study to have a look at the building. You know, the building's 50 years old, wanted to see how to get it through the next 50 years. And, and as a result of that, uh, council's done some really neat things. Uh, you replace the HVAC system. We have a marvelous new HVAC system, and it's actually uh, cool in the summertime and, and warm in the winter. I remember when it wasn't always that way. Yeah. Um, and now um, we're looking perhaps at some new relatively immediate challenges. Uh, for those of you who have been to the library recently, you may have enjoyed our many roof leaks. Um, you've seen uh, that we've been able to uh, you know, keep damage to the collection down to a minimum. But if you've noticed that my staff are very fleet of foot and fast with tarpaulin and tape, um, that's because it's just it's been working out that way. Um, we also want to say thanks uh, for the ongoing work that Jason and his team have been doing to um, keep uh, the villages sanitary sewer system where it belongs below ground and 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 not in certain uh, you know outlet flows in the in, in the library where we've had a couple of incidents and so my understanding is is that the village is considering uh, as part of its budget as part of its capital budget this year uh, a project where we would take the the notorious flat roof of the Yellow Springs Community Library and um, put a pitch on it um, put a proper 
uh, roof on it so that it will drain when the roof has leaked just so you understand what's been going on is is that uh, water from the rains or or this winter from the ice um, uh, kind of pull up on the roof and and sit there and when enough water gets in it gets through the the seams in the, in the roof um, and uh, a couple sometimes spectacularly mostly not usually it's just uh, drips um, and so I would very much appreciate that the village is considering this as part of your capital plan. And also, again, want to express my appreciation. Uh, when I began my work with the Library Commission, one of the things that we most wanted to see uh, was um, the opportunity to have a dialogue with the council to see how we can uh, make that building last uh, so that when Lily Claire is on council, she'll be taking care of it. And um, very grateful for all of your efforts in that respect. With that said, I would be delighted to answer questions to the best of my ability, either on the roof plan, uh, although again, Jason really is probably more of the expert there, um, or on the operations of the library. Did I make the three minute shot clock? <laughs> Commission, <laughs> you had a little bit more time, but thank you would for being uh, succinct. Yeah, and would you mention the Dolly Parton project and also, you know, maybe give a pre. Do you feel like giving a prelude to November? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, thank you very much. Uh, the um, one of the commitments that the lo oh, Lily Claire, <laughs> come here, sweetheart. Um, one of the things that it's my pleasure to do as director of the library is talk to the community every two years through a survey, uh, find out what we should be doing, wi what we should be doing with your money. And one of the things that we've heard most from people is, is that they want to see us out uh, and in front leading in the area of early childhood literacy. As you may be aware, um, pre-literacy, which is the set of skills that actually comes before reading, uh, it's knowing that you read a book uh, and not, say as in the case of both my daughters at some point, uh, eat it. <laughs> uh, it's the skill of knowing which way is right. It's knowing that the, the letters go with the pictures and that together they tell a story. These are called pre-literacy skills. And what we're finding more and more in many places is, is that kids are coming to kindergarten without those vital pre-literacy skills. When kids get to kindergarten without those vital pre-literacy skills, the teachers um, aren't in the position to provide the value that they've been trained to add to the kids at the right level. Instead, they're behind. They start out instantly behind. Developmentally, the critical time to acquire pre-literacy skills are from ages 0 to 3, and definitely by age 5. Um, well, about 20 years ago, a program was started down in Sevier County, Tennessee, where they made sure that um, kids would begin to acquire pre-literacy skills at a very, very high rate. The driver of the project was the discovery through a number of studies done um, by various universities, including Emory, uh, Reading is Fundamental, other groups like that, that book ownership is the driver for children acquiring pre-literacy skills. Now, I'm a librarian. I'm in the uh, getting books to kids and then getting them back business. <laughs> um, but book ownership is the critical driver for acquisition of uh, early literacy skills. And so, um, the Green County Public Library, in partnership with the Green County Public Library Foundation, with Soin Medical Center, with United Way of Greater Dayton, uh, with all three Green County Rotary Clubs, and I'm very proud to say the Yellow Springs Library Association, um, have organized a project where we are going to offer uh, a book a month through a project known as the Dolly Parton Imagination Library um, to each child below the age of five in Green County. It's been a big fundraising project. Um, we kind of figured that we would uh, pull this project together, we'd raise some money, and we would hope for the best. Um, we were supposed to sign up uh, 1,600 kids if we were doing really well in the first year of the project. In the first four months of the project, we've signed up 2,700 kids. Wow. Um, and, um, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down yet. Um, we're very proud to be able to uh, be carrying out the community's mandate to us in this area and, um, and making our kids into readers. Um, we're very proud of that. Um, and, um, and as Karen uh, alludes to, the, the library, um, like a lot of government entities, uh, has experienced some dramatic funding shifts, especially since 2008. The Public Library Fund, which when I became director, uh, made up 60% of the library's funding, has now fallen to about 47% of the library's funding. Uh, the remainder of it were uh, making up basically with uh, levy funds from the county. We receive a one mill uh, levy in support of the library's operations. And just to be totally honest about it, at this point, money that we've saved. Um, 
we will be at a point uh, by 2016 where if we don't um, go to the community and kind of let folks know what's going on and that we need additional levy support, that uh, we'll be having to make very dramatic changes uh, at the library. Um, and that all sounds scary, but to be honest, um, what we see is, is that because we support our kids, because we support our seniors, because we support uh, access to technology uh, for folks who need it from everything to e-government to job applications to uh, just staying in touch with your family around the world. Um, what we're finding is, is that when folks understand that the library is in need, um, they're ready to come support us um, just as we've been there to support them. And um, we've been there to support you basically because well, like we said, it's your money and you told us to. Uh, and it's our, it's our uh, great matter of pride for us to be able to serve uh, so many people so well in Greene County. Thanks, Carl. Carl, just one question. How can someone support the, uh, the book program? Oh, thank you. Um, actually, uh, there are a couple of ways. Um, you can d donate directly through the Greene County Public Library Foundation. And if you go to the library's website, greenlibrary.info, you'll find all the links that you need to get to the Dolly Parton Imagination Library there. Um, also, um, I'm proud uh, to say that uh, United Way of Greater Dayton has been tremendously involved in this. Uh, so for example, my wife and I support the program through our United Way giving. Mm -hmm. Jerry, did you have anything to add as the liaison to Carl's report? Uh, yes. Um, th there is an effort afoot to uh, kind of spruce up the yes. outside. Uh, so I believe the uh, Library Association? That's correct. Yeah, they're going to foot the bill to uh, plant some edible, edible mm -hmm. vegeta vegetation along the, uh, I guess it would be the south side and east side of the library. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Library Commission member. Uh, Lori Gravely, you know, appointed by the council, uh, is spearheading this effort, and I'm pleased to say, just as um, as Jerry said, that the Yellow Springs Library Association has agreed to fund it so that the project can move forward immediately. Because, uh, as you can hear, planting season is upon us. Yes, great. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Well, I'd just like to affirm that in our previous budget, we did uh, agree to fund the roof. Yeah, we'll talk about it in two minutes. Okay, it, I didn't see it in here. It's it. I think it's in there, isn't yes. it? Yeah. <coughs> stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, I would you like me to stick around for the discussion. Uh, if you if you want, I don't if I don't think oh. you need to. I you think don't have to. Yeah. I I, I, Jason's here, so. Oh, yeah, I would be delighted to, but as you can yeah. see, I have other duties to attend yes. to. No, I think that that Jason's here to answer questions. So. Okay. Thank you again. I'm Thank you, Carl. Uh, honored by the opportunity. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we're moving on to the uh, 2014 capital budget. Um, just to reiterate, um, at the last meeting we passed the operating budget because that's what we legally had to do to get to the county auditor. Um, Melissa suggested we separate out the capital budget since that requires a little bit more conversation and, and um, uh, discussion on projects. So um, we did that and we'll take up the discussion tonight hopefully to move on to two pieces of legislation so that we have the first reading at the April 21st meeting and the second reading at the May whatever meeting the, the first meeting in May um, so Melissa is here um, I also asked Jason to come since I think most of the um, I think most of the items that may there may be questions about are probably in his budget either the streets or the parks or the facilities budget so I also asked him to be here so Melissa why don't you uh, come on up and tell us what uh, what we're looking at okay this this has been circulated a number of times um, there haven't really been any changes to it since the last time that it was viewed um, this was the original version of this didn't have the lines through it. It wasn't spread out over five years. Um, at Council's request, we spread things out that we could over multiple years if uh, the project warranted such. And Kent and I kind of, after the last meeting where capital projects were discussed, um, things that Council seemed to be favorable or unfavorable towards, we tried to update this list to reflect that. So anything that has a line through it, we thought that Council was kind of moving in the direction towards um, not funding the that particular project and then anything that's still left on there 
um, we thought council was more favorable towards so this is just kind of our recollection of the last conversation that we had and um, basically that's it there were just a few things that were updated um, that I can remember off the top of my head um, the dump trucks um, in both areas in the electric and then in the streets fund were funded out um, over the course of five years with um, 2014 being um, a higher allocation because the chassis can be spread out over a couple of years but the bed and or no was it, it cannot be the yeah. chassis and the cab can be okay I knew I was going to mess that up. So. <laughs> I right. knew that something could be spread out and something <laughs> couldn't be spread out. So, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So, okay. Um, the Sutton Farm facility improvement is a fifty thousand there. Just a design or the initial cost? It was maybe for planning. For planning. Mm -hmm. Thinking that's all really all realistically we could we could probably get done this year with everything else going on. Is that the Who's heading, who's heading up that project? I mean, is, is have you done any? I know that there was some discussion of you doing some initial kind of investigation. Has that happened? Yeah, yeah I reported all my findings you, to Mr. Bristol. Yeah. Do you have anything to report about it? or? Well, Jason went out and looked at what some other, uh, actually, they were private enterprises, had done to acquire buildings that would house their equipment and keep it out of the weather and uh, came up with some estimates. Uh, what it would cost for a, a, simply a storage building and I don't remember, recall the number but uh, I said put some money. Can, can you talk a little bit more directly into your, okay, I can tell people are having a hard time hearing and you're kind of, uh, you've got a lovely voice, it's yeah. uh, very gentle on the ears. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, uh, to, the, to the simple extent of going out and getting a rough estimate from a contractor about what it would cost to build a, a building as a step one of a complete project to rehabilitate the Sutton farm that's been done and I'm sorry Jason I don't remember the number off the top of my head but I don't remember the, the number off, but I can get that yeah. number to council okay yeah. and, and the idea of the money was uh, partly for planning and partly as a place marker the idea being that if you decided we could go ahead and start by building a, the first building that we could finance that over a period of time and that would be a, a um, a mortgage payment. So you don't necessarily know if it's five hundred thousand. I mean, or is, does that sound? Does that seem about right? That's what we have in there, just kind of as an estimate. Uh, the estimate. That's a total cost, but for this cost, year, right, fifty thousand. The estimate that I I got um, was considerably less than that. Yeah. Really? Oh, good. Yes. Okay. But it didn't meet all of our needs. It was a it was a partial response. Yes. yes. Basically, it was a quick building to say this is what we need. How is the cheapest way we can get this this thing done? And that's what was looked at. Okay. It's yeah, no if we can just have that in, in, at maybe the next meeting, just yes, kind of a little bit more of the numbers, that would be lovely. Okay. And, and I do understand. I think I was talking, I think it was John Eastman I was talking to. I do think the township has some needs for facilities, some facility needs. So it seems to me that, that we should be including them in this discussion um, it, because I would assume that their needs are very similar. They have s similar equipment to us. So I would like to encourage us to... Um, to look at you know ma potentially making it a joint <coughs> project if we can could could we go one page one and then two sure. and page yeah. three um, I mean I, so I mean let's just go let's let's go line by line that really it really isn't that long um, so the Bryan Center upgrades what else besides I mean we've talked about council chamber I think Jerry is presenting something at the next meeting on that what else is happening in the Bryan Center uh, mr. Bristol and I had talked okay. about that um, it was originally 25,000 for the council chambers upgrade and we had allocated an extra 25,000 for just general sprucing up down in the lobby area I know that the finance and utility area is in pretty uh, you know bad shape and in need of carpet and brushing up um, paint and such um, so that was kind of the intention was just freshening up the downstairs area since the upstairs had been done so that was what the extra was for and and somewhere either in the general fund budget or here we've got some money for the youth center the teen center is that here um 
No additional was put in here, no. We just, I know that, I mean, at, at a minimum, there's floor that needs to be fixed. That, that floor, you know, and I don't know if it's oh, the whole so floor painting. has to be replaced. Right. I mean, painting, things that are, I think what, what we decided is that anything beyond that equipment-wise, I think that you, there's a group together that's yeah. looking right. at right. And more the, function. And, and the Human Relations Commission okay. help with the equipment. So. I think what we talked about was, yeah, the floor, of course, and some painting. Um, I don't know if we have any estimates on that, or I had heard a number like 2,500. Yeah, actually, I, that's what we had on our book, have in our budget. Um, what we've done to d today, actually, is we replaced all the, the broken floor to prevent trip hazards. Um, all it really needs is, is a really good cleaning, and I have CentOS coming in to give me an estimate on that, as well as the bathrooms. And I've talked to Samantha about sprucing up, repainting, and everything. And um, the staff down there can take care of that. But they're going to try to just clean up everything. They're going to come in on a Sunday and scrub everything down and, and really make it look nice and see where we can go from there. Because it's just a matter of, of a little paint here and, and there. It's not a matter of redoing the whole entire youth center, mm -hmm. per se. Okay. And, you know, working with her. You know, she's applying for those grants to get new pieces of, of, of um, games and which games was approved. In there. Yeah. Yes. So it's really yes. just more in the maintenance, the general fund maintenance budget. We don't need to worry about it in the capital no, budget. No, okay. no, great. Thank you. Um, any other questions on the on that? Uh, no, not on that. Okay. I mean, then just then the special revenue fund probably. Well, well, allowed no, I, I guess I had. My <coughs> excuse me. Uh, in terms of the uh, Sutton Farm, um, oh, we're going. We'll get there. Right. We're, oh. we're going. Am I in the wrong page? That was my fault. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was the one who just. I, I'm on page two. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I, because okay. I didn't understand the okay. number. I wanted to make sure. Yes. So so I'm sorry. That was my fault. <laughs> okay, okay. So then, in special revenue fund, starts out with street fund. Um, the first thing on there, the first line item is is sidewalks. Jason, I mean, you might as well stand up here. Most mm -hmm. of the stuff is yours. Yes, ma'am. Um, sidewalks, what this entails um, is basically breaking it down for the streetscape project only. This 180000 is what we estimated to complete the streetscape project as far as tearing out the concrete and replacing new concrete. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include uh, the additional cost of what it's going to cost for Johnny to run um, new conduit, new electrical lines, new poles. Did he put that in his fund? Would that be in, in the, the electric, electric fund? fund? Yeah, it'd be in yeah, the, he does. Okay, yeah, we electric okay. fund. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then this is only the downtown. It doesn't include sidewalks around the Mills Lawn. This does not include uh, Mills Lawn sidewalks and or Mercer Court sidewalks for right now. Um, the Mercer Court project. Um, we're doing the question. Yes, we did the questionnaire and, and, and everything. Um, what we can do as far as the sidewalks on Mercer Court is totally out of operational, my to operational budget. Mm -hmm. If we do anything around Mills Lawn, that would have to be in taken out of this or in addition to. And, and, do, you, and do you have a cost? Yes, an estimate? What I had, what um, Councilman Asklin had asked me to do is put together something and what I had was um, pieces of pieces of broken up concrete around the school Elm Street and South Walnut um, included 1,475 square feet um, at around eight dollars per square feet that would roughly be around under um, about twelve thousand dollars just under okay. um, if we were to replace all the sidewalk in that area Elm Street all the way down um, and then across on South Walnut, it would we be looking at uh, fifty-eight thousand to to doing everything. Didn't seem to me like it just it all needed to be replaced. I mean, there's right. there's a lot of good sidewalk, but there's a lot of really bad sidewalk too. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of cracking. There's a lot of upheaving. Uh, most of it though is exposed aggregate, which means you've got the the rough patches, the bicycles, the skateboards, everything else. There's there's still that little trip hazard there, so. Mm -hmm. It's just totally dependent on how much we. So, what do you recommend? Um, if we want to have those sidewalks be safe and usable. Immediately, I recommend that the spots be taken up. There's there some spots on um, South Walnut that are really bad. Um, a few on Elm Street. 
Yeah, a few on Elm Street, <laughs> but but mainly on um, Walnut Street. I it, believe. Is my that crew. the twelve thousand estimate? Yes, yes ma'am. Yep. Okay. I well, believe my crew. Uh, we went out and, and calculated, and I think it's eighteen spots in which we would have to take up. Oh, go ahead. No. no, go ahead. D did you did you look across the street? There's a couple of really bad ones in front of the church too. Yes, ma'am. South Walnut. The the one that the one that's there, we can grind that down if we don't need to to replace. Okay. And that and that's not going to cost us anything. But okay. But man, our time. Okay. Well, I'd like to see that twelve thousand included, and in, and I'd like to also see that work done sooner, maybe than the streetscape mm -hmm. for safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, and you don't have to worry about street fare quite as much, although somewhat as much. Yeah, I get, never mind. You do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore what I just said. You do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's getting. I, you know, I'll tell you, it's getting. It's amazing. It's already April. So I know. <laughs> are you? So are you? Are we putting together an RFP for a concrete con company? What are we? How are we doing that, Kent? I was actually waiting on Mr. Bristol to come back to to put that together. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would I would agree. I agree with Marianne <coughs> um, to, that that's important to do. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, definitely. Anything else on, on the special revenue on Jason's list on the street fund? Um, I think he's explained everything else. I have previously. a question um, about the storm drain on limestone. I thought I saw at one point, Kent, you talked about having a TIF project. Was that for the storm drain or was that for something well, else? Well, there are three elements there. There's storm drainage, sanitary sewage, and water. And uh, looking at the possibility of doing a TIF financing for that so but should we include this 85 at this point for yes okay. yeah, sure, yeah. and then the other question I had was about the dump truck mm -hmm. is it the same dump truck included in Johnny's in Johnny's no it's a separate one. so you got getting two dump trucks yeah okay we're in need of two okay got a lot of utility departments <laughs> yeah. um, Okay, so any let's see, let's let's do let's hold on the green space fund, even though it's next in line, and and move on. Then maybe Jason could even take off. Let's look at the next page: parks and rec and facilities improvement fund. Um, so we had talked about the the bridges at Ellis Park. I think we decided. Uh, yeah, to take I, them. I'm actually changing my mind about this um, I, I'm aghast at the cost of this and I've talked to Jason uh, a bit before this meeting um, and apparently if we were to have it have someone come in and build it there's only one company and this is what they would cost one local company one local company yes ma'am um, at the same time I think it is definitely a safety issue at Ellis Pond and um, you know, if we're talking about green space, I, I think I, I'd like to see us look at our own, the green space that we own, as a priority. So I, I don't know. I'm leaning towards saying yes, at least to the one bridge. I know we had talked about maybe getting volunteers to do it, but then as Brian and I were talking, we are talking about getting volunteers to do a bridge, a playground equipment, and skate a skate park, and that yeah. feels a little over the top. So. I guess I'd like to see what other council members think. I think the idea was that we would be looking for people who would be willing to try to fundraise for, you know, <coughs> for just general these parks improvement projects. Um, and so all, of, but you're right, it would be quite a bit. Um, I don't know. It, it really, the one bridge is the one place is where it's dangerous, right? Where people just it's will not way. ignore. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Will will go around any fence or yep. that we put up because they really want to cross yep. the spillway. The, the spillway there. Yes, ma'am. So that's the one that's really vital. The other one would be nice to kind of yeah make a loop. And the tree committee has already talked about doing some fundraising for the other bridge. Mm -hmm. to the Arboretum because that strictly goes to the to the Lloyd Kennedy Arboretum right 
I, I just have a problem with, I mean, it's not as if it's not accessible. It's, it's not that the area isn't accessible. People can, if, if people want to go to the, want to go to Ellis Pond and want to walk around, they can walk around the pond. Um, it, you know, it's crossing the, crossing the bridge or crossing the spillway is, is, is a convenience. It's not a necessity. The but thing that we're running into is no matter what we put out there, they're going around. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've installed bushes out there. We've installed guardrail out there. We've installed signs out there. We've start, installed snow fins out there. And nothing, and nothing seems to deter people from trying to cross the spillway. There's just enough water over that spillway right now to enable it, to, you know, the moss oh, to stay sure slick. Yeah, and, and so, slippery. so yeah. is it going to be? What would it be? Would it, it would be, be an arch? The, the bridge would be an arch. Is there anything? I know somebody. I don't know if it was somebody here or somebody else was talking about talking to Bob Geyer. Have you talked to Bob Geyer? I have not talked to Bob. I, not could you I talked do that? To, I talked to Luke, but I have not talked to Bob. I will. He's the county engineer. They build bridges all the time. I, they might have a bridge sitting over there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I mean, sir, they might be willing. He might be willing to help. Yeah. In some way. Yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe we could even purchase something through a program that they have that would be hmm. less expensive. Uh, is this a? We're. This is just a discussion item, right? This is not. Um, this isn't an ordinance no, that we're, we're not. voting right. on. We're discussing tonight. Um, and is the plan oh. to bring this forward as an next, ordinance at the, next meeting. at the next meeting? It will be okay. a supplemental, right? And that then it's it two, two readings, so there's okay. no need to do an emergency. Well, Although I am a little bit concerned about some of these projects and spending, the ability for him to spend on some of these projects that really need to get started. I know. Well, uh, it might be good if if there's citizens who have thoughts about this bridge. I actually wouldn't mind hearing from citizens about uh, about this. I, I feel like this isn't something people have that's really been on the on the front burner. So I haven't heard anything from mm -hmm. citizens um, other than. So at any rate, I, I don't know if there's anybody here tonight who has concerns. I, I would feel better voting on this if I had a better sense of where the community is on this mm -hmm. other than I agree it is a safety concern and it doesn't we've tried lots of things to keep people from walking there and it's hard to keep people from walking there but seventy thousand dollars for a footpath little 10 foot thing no, is 60 yeah it's 60 foot 60 and, and so 60 foot long 60 foot. how wide it's four foot wide mm -hmm. it's exactly. got okay. it's it's got to be an arc though because there is uh, a lot of flooding that goes on out there. That's right. So they can't put it right on top. Yeah, you can't of put it right on top of it, and you can't put it. You know, we you know we could have built a, a wooden bridge. We could have put something out there. But you're only going to get probably eight, maybe ten years, even if you put uh, treated wood. Right. I mean, that water is just going to so be through it. If we have too big of an arc, are we going to have ADA issues? No. This the the one that was proposed to us by uh, J and J Slagle is um, ADA compliant. ADA compliant. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. So we could should encourage citizens who think that's important to come to the next meeting, right. or, or write a letter. Right. Um, yeah, we'd like to know. I mean, it's seventy thousand dollars. That um, it's it's a lot of money. And if you could, you know, maybe do talk to Bob Geyer, see if you can get you know get any thoughts from him. Any, or I could I could call him potentially. I could. I don't know if that would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can give him a call. Okay. Um, let's see what else is on here for for Jason. Um, did we did we do did we really give anybody a chance? Any does anybody have a anything to say about the bridge out there? I guess there's a couple of things. So this is Amy Magnus. Um, we've had some discussions about home at Home Inc. On uh, we we talked a little bit about volunteering, but um, one of the questions that we have is would it be helpful to get materials to get. To um to seek a donation in materials. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So we'll leave that in as a potential. Oh, sorry, Dan. Would like to speak. Dan Rose. I just uh, speaking uh, devil's advocate in a certain sense, and I don't know 
ultimately what the best answer is, but I wonder a little bit about the um, how much weight to put onto the interpretation of ADA compliance since we're in the middle of a lawn and there are other possible passageways that one could take equally accessible. So I'm not sure that that's going to be a stumbling block for the bridge. If I were trying to think of a simple solution that's cost effective uh, and comparable, I wonder in a sense, and it's too bad Nick has left, uh, the Glen has a number of passageways that are certainly not ADA compliant, but seem to be perfectly acceptable. For instance, stepping stones to get across streams uh, that are relatively safe and stable, or at least don't seem to lead to inju injuries. So I, I, I don't know uh, if there's some occasion or some opportunity to look at the problem a little bit more creatively. Not to say uh, that I, um, you know, not to say that stepping stones are the best solution, but there might be a range in between and something that's suitable that does the job uh, without being, uh, I mean, the, you know, the, the idea of an arch bridge that's ADA compliant suggests that you have a pathway system that's also ADA compliant and uh, perhaps some facilities that you're trying to serve that are essential to the park. I don't know that all those things are true in this case. Okay. So, so it might be worth redefining the problem a little bit. Thanks, Thank you. Dan. Um, so we'll just, I guess, hold that for more comment for next next meeting. Um, so the next is the pool, twenty thousand dollars for the things that Jason described a little bit earlier in the meeting. Um, questions or comments? So could you be um, what are what are you looking at in terms of the the pool improvement? Was it basically sort of cementing in part and putting more seating in and some? sail shades kind of thing yeah it'll be more shading um typically our what's what's up there now is just tree shading and that's yeah. not sufficient um so um on the interior uh, by the women's restroom we're going to block off that whole area and pour concrete and then erect something to provide shade right there mm -hmm. um now that we are going to go in contract with uh Dayton pool management we're going to um like karen uh, alluded to we're going to look at more um, a better way to utilize the space that Miss Edwards came up and talked about um, so that we could possibly take that grass out altogether um, but that will probably be a project that will come later on right yeah because this this will be tying up the majority right we we are small staffed yeah we can only <laughs> yeah. do so, so much in yeah. especially in the short amount of time we have before pool season yep. starts yeah and then the skate park, um, $35,000 worth of improvements to the skate park. Does that include the $3,000 or not? The $3,000 donation. So would it be thirty eight? It would be thirty eight Total? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. What would probably be good as we think about this in the future would be if we had a kind of a, <coughs> a parks foundation that was you know building up capital in order to spend on special projects related to our parks and recreation system so not for maintenance but if people wanted to make donations for a bridge like that or for better um, improvements that kind of special improvements to this, the pool that aren't about you know making sure the drains work um, that that's probably perhaps what we should be looking to try to to build uh, that's financially something that, that's something that Brian and I actually talked about earlier today after a meeting this idea because we were talking about the loss of it we were out with a ta Beaver Creek Township trustee having lunch and talking about um, the loss of estate tax and what that's done to communities and um, you know that we feel like we're a community that that our, our people really do want to to help the community and so maybe there are ways that we could Go talk to the start talking to the community foundation about holding the funds, but have them be potentially um, estate <coughs> funds that people are setting aside. Um, right. And but it would be for that we would you know we would have one for the library, we could have one for the parks. You know, pick two or three areas. Maybe green space would be another one. You know, have specific areas of interest that we know our community right. has, and, and urge people and ask to them to set aside money in that way or give money in that way. So. You know that's right. something. You know, Jerry's. Jerry's. You're, are you still on the community foundation board? Mm -hmm. So that's something that you know maybe just casually bring up to them and see what they would think. And well, I'm not on the board. You're I'm not on the board. I'm, excuse me. I'm on the uh, 
committee for the, the committee the committee that that approves and disapproves yeah. grants mm -hmm. the grant committee I'm sorry is okay. what I meant well I might mention that but I just you know I mean right. it's not going to happen anytime mm -hmm. it's not going to maybe even happen this year but I think it's something that we really should move towards right yeah another people should be aware that I mean it's a I don't know how to say it politely but you know in when you died it used to be that we got a very generous donation <laughs> from your uh, through the taxes oh, from people's wills point. and that is gone. That's gone we get nothing yeah. effectively um, and that was really sustaining a lot of the services that people have come to really love in this community and so without those taxes doing special project like these are going to become very difficult um, because we've we've got cuts from the state and we've lost that fund that used to we kind of depended on for doing special things that other communities our size really have not traditionally been able to pr provide like a building like this people often say it's very rare for a build a, a community our size to have a building like this with as many rooms and services and opportunities for people to have recreation and classes it's it's unusual and that's because we've had this very large tax base in the past and and more recently at least we've still had the estate taxes which we do not get anymore right yeah, another oh, go ahead Ken well, I was just gonna say another interesting thing is uh, Dayton Metro Parks um, this year are getting a percentage of everything every bottle that New Belgium sale sells mm -hmm. and you know again I mean that's obviously a bigger city and all that but I wonder you know if there's some kind of way we can look at another revenue source there one of the suburbs of Chicago many this is several decades ago published a gift catalog so if if you had uh, family members living in Forest Hills and they wanted to give your family a gift they could buy a park bench or a oh, water great. fountain or and they actually had a catalog of things you could buy as uh, well, that would be cool. You put it online mm -hmm. around Christmas sure. time. <laughs> That'd be great. It would actually be really. I just looked at the clock and realized we're way behind, we're way behind. schedule. Yeah. schedule. Um, the one other thing, and I, it, it probably isn't for this budget, but I just want you to be thinking about it, is um, Gaunt Park, Gaunt, the fields, baseball fields, and maybe thinking about next year doing a little bit bigger yeah. project actually, there. Actually, Melissa and I have been in discussion um, a couple times about this um, and it looks right now the way that we have uh, for the parks and rec um, maintenance fund that we'll have enough to um, do the project um, the only thing is that we're going to have to sit and meet you know um, with Steve Rosai from uh, Yellow Springs and um, as well as Tim Sherwood and uh, get everything hacked out so that if this indeed does go through that we can start this right after the season mm -hmm. um, because we can't wait till the spring or else it won't won't ever it won't get take yeah. yes yes okay good okay great okay um the only other thing i guess for jason we've got the sutton farm and which we've talked about and so this is just kind of a placeholder for now i guess for this year right. and I then guess the library my, roof my my question there is as a placeholder um you know we're getting two more pieces of expensive equipment and, and and the guys right now have to make a determination what piece do they pull out and, and, and set outside mm -hmm. and, and what do we put in and uh, <clears throat> I guess my question is if if they were able to, to then go out and research and find uh, a suitable structure can they then bring it back to council to be funded and and then move forward with it? I and <laughs> I, I don't think it's gonna cost them fifty thousand to to go out and find that. But it <coughs> mm -hmm. and the thing that I'd want them to to look at is possibly finding something that we could finance over time mm -hmm. and not have to put in the uh, right. the, yeah. the full amount up up front. But uh, no, I would I would agree. I, I think <coughs> the sooner we get that expensive equipment covered, the better it, it, it's an investment that it ultimately pays for itself um, right. and that it's really hard on equipment to have it sitting outside. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. It's, it's 
probably not possible to do it this year, though. This is probably not a 2014 project to, to prepare for, but a 2015 project to construct, I would think. Wouldn't do you think? I, I would say as soon as possible. And, okay. and just because, you know, we have a number of machines, not only new machines, but a number of machines that are sitting outside that we're constantly dumping money into. Um, I believe last year I came to you guys and said that the street sweeper had sufficient right. holes in the top of it because, well, now they're bigger. Well, it's going to cost us, I, you know, I, twice as I, much. I right. agree. I agree with what's been said. I, I just didn't know that we really would really have the ability, that you guys would have the, the ability to actually manage Get, get this project done but you know see what you can you do can, move you can, forward if you can do what you can do just yeah. come come to us for we'll put 50,000 in for now and if we need more um, we'll we'll do it if you if you feel like you can you can accomplish it and get it done and then so then we've got the library roof replacement and then there's drywall that's the outside is that that area to the north it will be okay yeah it, it will be the area to the north Okay. So I, I had a question about that. So I heard that that was a, a temporary fix and that, I mean, ultimately we have to look at the, the storm sewer. So yeah, actually what the project that's going on uh, limestone street, the, the drainage work, they're actually going to come up the alleyway there and install a catch basin at the lowest point um, going into the alley coming off the library, which will, will collect all that, that storm water. When we redesign the roof and slope everything to the north, we'll run the downspouts into another catch basin and then run it out that pipe. The drywall will just act as a, as, as a filtration system. Mm -hmm. um, it, it'll be basically be whereas it'll fill up with water and then slowly drain off just like a French drain. There'll be no cap, no cover, no nothing on it but it'll just, it'll just slowly work its way down. And it'll actually serve two purposes. One, we'll get cleaner water out of it. And two, coming off that roof, it won't be as hot. It'll get through the, that, those rocks and then out and then into the streams at a, at a cooler temperature. Okay. That's better environmentally. Better, yes, yes ma'am. Yep. And then in the sewer collection, we've got um, sanitary sewer line and the I&I &I project. Um, 50,000. So I guess is that 50,000? Is there supposed to be 50,000 then? Yes. 150 total over the next three years? Yes, is that? Yep. Okay. Yep. And that is just getting everything compliant for CMOM, what we've already done, and try to help eliminate the, the bypassing of the lift station. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks. So, any other any specifics? I, I'm sure that they, we want to have talk about the. Um, um, the green space, anything else on there specifically so we can start to get caught up on the... Um, I just schedule. have some questions about fair acres. About what? Fair acres? Fair acres? Oh. On page three, or have we gotten to page yeah. three? Yeah, yeah, we're at page three, um, sure. Because my understanding was that the water line and sewer line needed to be replaced and that was one reason for not <coughs> doing road work, but it seems that this budget shows road work being done, the water line not being done till 2017, and no sewer work being done. Can you explain that? We, we, need, we need to have a community forum with the people in that neighborhood and talk about what needs to be done. Um, the, the obvious presenting problem is the road surface, which is broken up and, and rough. And on the one hand, there are people saying, don't waste money fixing the surface of a road where all the underpinnings are, are rotten. You know, if, it, if you're going to do it, don't waste money, don't do it nick, you know, nickel and dime. Rip everything out and replace the water, replace the sewer, then do the streets and do it once and do it right. There are other people who are saying, well, yes, the water and the sewer are problems, but it's a sporadic um, issue and uh, you, you may have a, ro a year go by where there's no disruption and uh, that's not a crisis forget about the utilities just do the streets and be done with it that's the that's the main obvious problem and so I we need to get together with the residents of the neighborhood and talk about what the options are and what people's perceptions are what they're willing to support and uh, but right now there is no plan. 
for paying for it essentially I mean it's what yeah. it'd be a hundred that or a, almost a million dollar project right I think I figured eight hundred and eighty thousand something on that order yeah yes yeah very expensive so there was what eighty thousand in there for there was eighty thousand and that was for a, uh, a resurfacing job it wasn't even a major repaving just level out the surface fill the cracks oh. Oh, okay. provide a new surface and that was going to be a holding action that would keep everything together for five to ten years while we worked out what do we okay. need to do how can we pay for it so this is probably something that's not going to happen under your temporary <laughs> i think not <laughs> no this is okay. this is uh this is big <coughs> problem that needs to be yeah. worked on yeah thank okay. you it, um, Looks like why Paul am I would Paul? like. I'm going blank. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Uh, Paul, I have to drop all. Jason is still here. I'd like to talk sidewalk a little bit. At the park on Corey Street, there are two or three missing blocks of, of concrete. It would be easy to fix. That's the route for Antioch students to come downtown. They walk in the street because of that and some bushes that kind of push them off the sidewalk. The other is uh, the 200 block of South Winter Street, which has been an issue for decades now since the village changed the swale between the road and the sidewalk. Now the sidewalk is constantly wet and weathered like this. It's a safe route to school. There was a, a good plan to fix the drainage in that area, which was turned down by a council member and assigned to a crew to to solve the solution was not satisfactory in my mind or my neighbors minds in that part of the solution was to install tank traps in the driveways and I was hoping that that could be resolved this year within the budget that the street has if it isn't then I'll rent a jackhammer and destroy the tank trap in front of my driveway thank you <clears throat> So is there anything else in the budget we want? Oh, sorry, Joan. Joan Edwards, um, this is something that I had brought up um, several times, and it has to do with the, um, the corner that I live on, and I know that I had spoken with Kent to possibly get something in the street that will slow the traffic down to the point where they will actually stop at the stop sign because that's the high school corner um, it's a safe routes to school it's the issue and I I know that I had mentioned this and Ken and I had spoken briefly about something and I wondered if um, there had been any further action on that Kent yeah Jason and I talked about it and the village already owns some rubber speed bumps that can be essentially attached to the ground. And I said, I would like to try it. And uh, Jason said, well, let's wait until the snow plowing season is over because those things raise hell with the plows. So, so, so yes, we, we would still hope to do that this spring, Joe. Put in some rubber uh, speed bumps. Thanks. Taki, oh, did I see your hand? I'm just curious about the fair anchor situation. I'm wondering, regardless of the opinions of the residents, what is it structurally that has led to that situation now in that neighborhood? I mean, is it some, uh, what happened? It, regardless of the opinions of the uh, of the residents of fair, of fair acres, there is a problem. There are different, perhaps differing perceptions about what to do with it, but is there something structurally? What was the cause? Oh, what has yeah. happened? The, the, the basic standard employed when they built that section of uh, of streets and sewers and so on was uh, they didn't meet a reasonable standard um, ground um, bedrock is close to the surface in the fair acres area and so instead of uh, chiseling holes in the concrete in the in the bedrock and burying the uh, sewer and the water line 
deep enough so that freezing wouldn't be an issue. They just sort of laid everything on top of the rock and uh, put some gravel over it and then paved the surface. And being shallow, they tend to freeze when it gets cold and um, when the ground heaves, it breaks the sewers. And so my understanding, uh, Jason, is that we're out there quite regularly, particularly in bad weather in winter, uh, making repairs to the utilities because they weren't installed properly in the first place. So, um, so the you know the question is, the ideal solution would be go to, to go back, rip everything out, start over. As we've already heard, that's a very expensive option. And uh, the question is, do we do we live with a compromised situation that provides a reasonably uniform surface for the road and just deal deals with problems from the uh, poor design as they come up? Or do we try to take a more uh, universal view? That's the... Well, and, and, and if the, we and do, the, then the how issue, do we pay for then it? And how do we pay for it? Yeah, in other words, uh, would we go back then and ask the residents of that area to cover some or all of the cost with a special assessment? <coughs> so those are what we're wrestling with. Okay. I would just <coughs> like to add given this discussion that it's not just the residents but our crew that's being impacted and, and the cost of the village sure. too and that needs to be taken into account mm -hmm. <coughs> so um, what is does anybody want to make any changes um, what do we anything <coughs> we want to see Melissa add or change in this budget when she brings it to us at the next meeting um, as an ordinance Well, I'd like the twelve thousand dollars to be added for the, the sidewalks around Mills Lawn. <coughs> that would take that from ninety <coughs> up to hundred and two. I think I add correctly. Yeah. Um, back to the Bryan Center upgrades. Um, and I definitely understand the the piece about council chambers. Um, the the improvements, the more general improvements that we're talking about, are are, are vague to me. So I don't really. Um, I guess I'd either like to know more of what the plan is, or consider lowering that part of the budget. Are we going to hear more next time? That was my understanding. Yeah. 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 So. We but can always we can always vote it down yeah. next time. If right. <coughs> the, the other thing I would be speaking to is the council chambers. The council chambers. Yeah. Right. No. And that's about half of that amount. Right. So I guess I. So I'd like to know what the other half of that amount is. Right. We're referring yeah, to or if you can somehow give us a little bit more detail on the what you were talking about for the improvements downstairs that would be helpful for us. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I, I don't know if we're going to have a discussion about it tonight, but I think there are some uh, really good arguments that have been brought forward about the green space fund. And you know, one of the things that, that I'm persuaded by, uh, not only that, that this is tied to important village values, but also uh, it was <coughs> Nick Budis who wrote a, a, a letter that I thought was very compelling about knowing what we have to work with. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that fund. We have taken a hundred thousand out of that that we've already allocated. So, you know, that does bring the fund down to 145. Um, my thought is to put 25,000 in this year um, to the green space fund. Well, I, I, I had written some something about that and. My sense is that given our financial situation, including the fact that the fund that funded the green space is no longer available to us, that we spend some time being strategic and looking at what, what are the important green space <coughs> criteria? What are the criteria that we have? Rather than, you know, at this point, sort of like there's this area around Yellow Springs I think it's important that if we're going to put money into it that we have identified what are the things that we want to preserve what, and I, I listed it in that so it's not that I don't support going for something if we've decided it's important but I don't support just putting money into a fund especially with a deficit 
budget that we're going to continue funding. Right. And I do agree 100% that we need to think more about our strategy and the priorities. I guess another way to look at it, though, is that, I mean, part of the uh, last amount that we got from the estate taxes is in our reserves. So, I mean, it's, you it, know, it was, it was the last estate tax we got already got put in this fund, that 50000 already was put in the fund. Right, but I think what he's saying is that the reserves that we've created were partly built up through that estate tax. Um, and so that's what he's saying is thinking of it more as a capital investment rather than as a, an ongoing expense. Because I believe the last amount we saw was about 500000 So, I mean, it, you know, it was a very significant chunk that we got the last year. I, mean, I don't have that number in front of me, but that, uh, I recall. I thought it was around 300. Or 300, yeah. okay. I thought it was like 302. That, yeah, okay, that could be. I, I would also say that, that um, the levy, um, one of the aspects that we did um, talk to the community about with the levy passage was supporting the Green Space Fund. It, it gives me huge <laughs> pause because, I mean, it's nice to be able to look at these other, these other things like the library fund and see these giant fund balances um, and we do have a large general fund fund balance, but we're also in a deficit spending situation. So it gives me an awful lot of pause to um, to be um, taking more money, creating a, a larger deficit budget for money for the green space fund. Um, but I do think that there is something symbolic about it, and I do think that the community has indicated that they do that that is something that they want to support. I think it's it's something that we should look at having a special fund for, like we were talking about for facilities, um, for people who, for whom that's that's an issue. But I, and I agree with Marianne that we um, um, that we do need to have a better discussion about what our goals are. Um, but. I would support the twenty-five thousand. What <coughs> do we have? A, do you we have a consensus? Take a vote? Should we just take a vote? So we have a motion. I'll be the second on that motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Um, I'll oppose. <coughs> so Melissa, we'll put twenty-five in for the next round. Okay. And I'm sorry. Who who made the motion? Uh, Brian, Brian made the did motion. you make the motion? Yes. <coughs> nice so, are we ready to move on? Yeah, and <coughs> I, I, I guess I just still, <coughs> in, in terms of the of the of the Sutton Farm, are we we telling the guys if to go out, see what they can come up with, and then bring it back to council? Yes. For, Particularly know. if it goes above this, what they can do. Well, yeah, it, it, it definitely will go thousand. above that. <coughs> but if if they can come up with a plan and get it done th this year, because they wouldn't be doing it, they would be hiring. We'd but, probably hire. But all things. parts of this are going to require either RFPs or they're going to require. I mean, they can't, they can't just go contract. These no, are, these no, are I, all yeah, items I, over. I, yeah, I know that, but. <coughs> for the initial plan to, so that we have a building to cover a lot of this equipment that we now have setting out. You know, that's what I'm, I'm more referring there, to. There's several elements. I mean, when, we, when the Sutton Farm is addressed, first you want undercover storage for your, uh, for your valuable equipment. You also need storage for materials and supplies. A lot of the electrical components and so on that we use are very valuable, shouldn't be out in the weather. Uh, we need adequate structure for the crew themselves, a, a room where they can check in and clock in, a, a lunch room, uh, maybe a shower facility, uh, things of that sort. We need, uh, we need a tool crib. So there, there are a number of different elements, and I think, I mean, the, the, the first and the most urgent one is probably let's provide shelter for the expensive equipment that's otherwise deteriorating. Uh, but all these other pieces need to be done, too, so. Correct. So I, I was more in terms of they would be coming back and saying, you yeah, know, this is what we can get done this year and what we want to. 
move yeah. out. That's phased. A would, phased plan. But yeah. I would like a, a phased strategic plan with costs attached before there's before there's there's anybody goes to an architect or an well, engineer yeah. or anybody else. Right. Okay, I mean. Yeah, that it right. Okay. But, but again, for example, uh, mm -hmm. you know, would they be allowed to move forward yeah. with that if? You know. I think we've I I think we've made it clear that yeah. this is a priority. Yes. Because okay. this costs us money. <coughs> gotcha. To <coughs> not do it. Not do so it. Okay. It, it hurts us in a lot of different ways. Okay. Um, it, it destroys our investments. Okay. So I think we're on the same page okay. there. Um, I'm going to. S are we? So are I we I have one com comment question. Um, I think probably this budget discussion is later than usually council would do it. Um, but as we're looking forward, especially toward um, a levy that will have to be probably renewed in 2017, is there, does council do, like, look multi-year and, for example, whenever that levy has to be renewed, 2017, I guess, mm -hmm. clearly if it weren't renewed, it would have a significant impact on our budget. and. It, I'm just thinking we need to be looking ahead and and also issues around affordability so I'm not suggesting we talk about it now but I'd like to see some way that we can be as any nonprofit I mean the nonprofit organizations I've been involved in we would be you know if we thought oh there's a possibility that we're gonna lose eight hundred thousand dollars in three years or something to be looking that right. way I mean I think that's something you know Melissa came in new finance director thrown right into the budget and she had to immediately get to that I'm sure that 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 that's the kind of thing she's going to start looking at when she gets this budget under wraps and is able to start looking more strategically at at the budget okay. with Rachel's support um, I'm going to suggest that we move on that we do not talk about the two new business items tonight I don't think that either of them are of great importance we have Doug Plunkett waiting to talk to us he was waiting to talk at 845 about um, the village manager search and I think we need to move forward we want to get Kent out of here is that is council in agreement with that now let's just move okay. those to the next so meeting. we'll move those to the next item um, any sort of a manager's report I guess you don't you can't possibly have a manager's <laughs> report well I, I do want to thank people I've gotten a lot of uh, expressions of support and uh, um, I've got flowers I've had food delivered uh, it's been mm -hmm. wonderful I'm thinking about extending this <laughs> <laughs> no no we won't let you <laughs> so, well, it's, uh, I've been very appreciative of uh, people's thanks and so well we're glad to see you up and yeah, going yeah, and you that back. you look uh, you're looking pretty healthy considering you were <laughs> flat on your back so we're we're just grateful that you're you came out of it well Judy, any? I, there's nothing of great import. Okay. Um, so the next um, agenda items, those two items, or the the resolution on the bronze sculpture trail, I think that will be ready. That will be ready from Chris. We have another proposal, public arts proposal, that we'll be getting from um, uh, Brian. Will be bringing from the public arts commission. Um, we will also have the ordinance, the budget ordinance. Um, capital budget ordinance um, council chambers upgrade presentation planning commission annual report is that oh have have you heard anything about it from okay okay can we try to both of us p remember to talk to Matt about that yes okay yes and then so then if we bring these two um, proposal for designated CIC for community resources and discussion of water sourcing I'm also wondering if if um, we want to package that with a discussion about a port authority and I'm also wondering if maybe we should just <coughs> save those two for a combined topic even for the May meeting for a May meeting the CIC um, and the CIC, the CIC part. okay for yeah. a May meeting <coughs> Water sourcing? Will we be ready to have a serious discussion of that? Well, I've got my, I've got the proposal that was right. The packet, that, and there that was really that. all that we were going to talk about. Okay. At this point. So Port Authority, we're talking May fifth. Yeah, first. let's. Okay. I mean, and the CI kind of combining that with the CIC designated CIC. 
Um, so I think that sounds, um, and I'm considering, I don't know if we need it, there's issue one is on the ballot, um, it's the capital projects issue, it's the, it's like a million, or it's like a hundred and how much, how much money? Anyway, it's a, it's a giant capital project that it's issue one, it's for basically bond money for the state that's going to be on the ballot in May. So I might ask, um, come up with a quick resolution on that, showing our support for that, because it's okay. money that, for capital projects that is available. So um, can um, I get a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of the hiring of a village official? So moved. Second. Could we take a break? Yes. 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 Yes.